And then things were real quiet. We got no cars, no more BMWs, not even anything in the garage. So Bobby left, he's on his way back to New Jersey. Uh, we recapped everybody else before, Kenan's back at work. I think Luke was taken today off as a recoup, I don't remember. Anyways, we're starting the day here in Hudson. We're not gonna end it here in Hudson, we got a road trip. My mom's pulling in now, I'm gonna go rent a car and we're driving eight hours south today. Yep, this is why I left Ohio. The days and days on end of this. I can't see 200 feet in front of the car. And I'm going 75 miles an hour. There are trucks frequently three across a three lane highway. Good God. Things are better in Columbus, in Ohio. Miles. Exit to exit 2A, State Route 315 South. Waze navigation anyway, is among the worst fault, I right? have seen. It is uh, worse than Google Maps. Uh, now, uh, rightfully, it's, it's bad. I these, like that it offers uh, all the other stuff that uh, that you know Apple Maps, in one mile, uh, Google Maps exit right. doesn't. But holy crap, is it uh, tricky to follow and, and, and slow and, and delayed and just every bit of agency that not that very polished. Did. It's not like we're trading for a guy who's 30, 31 years old, right? And the Celtics tried to... About halfway in between Columbus and Cincinnati, Ohio. There's really nothing here but a lot of wind, trees, a lot of trees, and occasional barns and adult sex toy stores on the side of the highway. Cincinnati, my second time visiting this city. Ken and I drove down here after we went to um, Enthusiast Auto. We pretty much drove through it, drove over the bridge, filled up with gas in Kentucky, and then drove back up to Cleveland, or Akron. There's quite a bit of traffic uh, affecting my ETA here a little bit, but at least no rain. Uh, or accidents. There's a lot of dead deer on 71. Like every five miles you see just an eviscerated deer. So the Ohio the River is really, really, really brown. I guess that's for, probably from all the rains stirring up sediment and whatnot. You know, there are teams around the league with your, your Portland, your Denver's. Starting to see some mountains out there. Um, I don't really know where we are, somewhere. I have directions into a gas station, but we're way the hell out here, way past Covington and Cincinnati. Um, so, so what do we do? What the hell? So, Timmy Fest ends Monday through Friday this week. I'm going to be down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's what we got, Megan's family, and I pitched it uh, for her parents for Christmas. Was this trip here in, in June to go down to Gatlinburg? So, I've never been to Tennessee. The only time I've ever been in Kentucky is just going over the freaking bridge back there so this is kind of an experience to get down here and see what things look like and it's pretty it's hilly there's not much going on Kentucky highways are a lot nicer than Ohio highways it's pretty much most of it's been four lanes we're down to three right now about four lanes right two for trucks left two for cars it's quite nice there's occasional things that say no trucks in the left lanes and there haven't really been too many of them so that's a nice feature um, what else? So I had to rent a car. There was a date snafu. I was planning on driving down with them. That didn't end up happening. So I'm coming a day late. They got there yesterday. So this is a 20 something, I don't know, 17, 18, 19 Hyundai Elantra. I reserved the standard car, which was standard size car, which was a Volkswagen Jetta or equivalent. I was hoping to get a Mark 6, a Mark 6 5 or a Mark 7 Jetta. I'm familiar with those, I like those cars. They don't have any left. So I got this thing, which is apparently equivalent. It is most definitely not equivalent. The biggest two problems. This, you know, where your knee sits for eight hours when you're diving to Tennessee is very hard, sharp plastic. And this, where your elbow constantly rests, is also very hard, sharp plastic. The steering wheel is very hard, sharp plastic. How are the touch points in a modern, it's got to be a twenty, twenty-two thousand dollar car 
this hard tinny plastic that just it kills my elbow hurts my knee hurts the ergonomics aren't right it's got a manual steering wheel but it has carplay like this is the problem with these Korean and Japanese cars is they put all the money in the stupid features like that I would much rather have padded touch materials, padded touch points, than CarPlay. CarPlay is cool, it's nice, but it isn't end-all, be-all. But it is for most people, that's all they care about. I don't have xenon lights, xenon headlights, but I have this uh, blind spot detection. There it is, look at that, blind spot detection. I can't just like make xenon lights, it doesn't work that way. Anyways, diatribe over. Um, I'm gonna stop and get some gas. I'll give it that, it's good on gas. It makes no power, the transmission is terrible. I don't know if it's a six or an eight speed. Let's see, it's a six speed, so it's not the ZF8 that everything under the sun has. Uh, but if you, wanted, if you want to go, you floor it, count to 50, and then at that point it'll downshift four gears, make a ton of noise, and go nowhere. So I've got 147 miles, two hours and 25 minutes to go, according to CarPlay, and ways. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple things that I just have not had time to talk to talk to you about. Um, high level overview will be Bimmerfest 2019, Timmy Fest 19, and I feel like there was a third thing. Maybe we'll remember it as we get there. Anyways, let's start with uh, what was most recent. Timmy Fest came out of nowhere. 20, you know, I think they started it in like 2011. We first went in 2013, we went every year, 14, 15, 16. In 16, we heard that there might not be another one. 17, um, they did another one, and then said that was the last one. I think the best turnouts were in probably 14 and 15, I'm thinking, maybe 16 too. 17 was a little bit smaller. I feel like those first years, 14, 15, 16, they had like sponsors, you pulled in, they put a sticker on your car, they told you what year or what, not, what number car you were. So you knew how many cars were there in attendance. Um, it was more organized, more professional, just organized, I guess. It's a bigger deal. Um, this year was really small, like cars and coffee small. There were 21 cars when I counted. Maybe there were 25 at one point. And, um, you know, everything was in the parking lot. It was just one small group, but it was a good group of people. I'm not complaining that it was small. Um, it was good. It was a good turn. It was a good group of people. It was just a small group of people. And it wasn't advertised as heavily. It's cool they brought it back, the same guys doing it. Um, very grateful that he put it on. Next year, we're all gonna work harder to promote, advertise a little. We're not looking to get crazy with it, but a bigger turnout, I think, will be in order next year. So that is this Timmy Fest. Obviously, the, the whole reason I come to Ohio and everybody comes here, it's not to go to Columbus for the show. Like, it could rain out and it wouldn't even make that big of a difference. It's the idea of getting everybody together at one specific time to just hang out and be friends and be car enthusiasts and do that. And it, Timmy Fest itself is just an excuse and a set in stone date and time to work around. So, a fun year. Now we talk about Bimmerfest. I had never been, I get texts every year, are you gonna be at Bimmerfest? No, I'm in Ohio. Oh, when are you moving to California? Next year, next year, next year. Well, I finally freaking did it. Um, and I went to Bimmerfest this year, and it was great. It was really different than Timmy Fest. You remember the vlog a couple of weeks ago, May 25th. I drove up to BMW Vista, Megan came with me, and then we convoyed from there up to, I always get the Fs mixed up. Fullerton, Fontana, one of those. It was Fontana, Nate lives in Fullerton. So, um, people didn't go nearly as crazy as I thought on the drive. I remember some of these Timmy Fest convoys. We were in groups of people going 180 miles an hour. Um, out of that group, most of those people have totaled their cars in the past few years. I don't think anybody died, but there was hospital time. What do you What do you expect? Three times the speed limit on, on city roads? Are you kidding me? Um, but with Bimmerfest, not only is there too much traffic, well, that's pretty much the reason. There's too much damn traffic on, in California on the 15 and other highways to have people going 170 and 180. I know they want to. There were people doing poles and flying around. Nothing crazy. Um, a lot more tame than I thought. We get there. It's at a huge park. The event is massive. The takeaways, the negative takeaways, I'll get to the negative ones first, save the positivity to, to end on here. The negative takeaways were most, the vast majority of cars there are extremely, extremely riced out, modified in my eyes, in my point of view, in my opinion. 
you know, they're slammed on bags and the track is kicked out and the, all the mufflers are cut off and then they, it's really, really, really ricey. It's very rare that you come across a very clean stock, tastefully modified, in my opinion, vehicle. They do exist, but not very many of them. And then the other negative takeaway was the fact that it was fairly disorganized. Like, the E39 M5 owners group kind of had people all, let's say there's 20 E39 M5s. There's 10 of them in a line over here, and then the other 10 are just randomly sprinkled throughout. I think whoever puts on, whoever sponsors, puts on the event should kind of take some data over the past few years, figure out what cars are there and what approximate quantities, and then try to organize your E46 M3s, your E60 M5s, your F10 M5s, your F80 M3s, and just you know lay everything out, and then try to get them all parked the same way. If people want to do photo shoots, you can arrange them by color, or style, you know, whatever. Organize it a little bit better. Um, a lot of vendors, a lot of people, no complaints with any of that. It was pretty warm. Obviously, that's just Southern California away from the ocean in late May. Um, didn't rain. It was a beautiful day. The food was was decent, a little pricey, but you know, that's that's, that's catering. That's catered food truck food in a, in a big venue. Um, it's a lot of fun. The the positive takeaways are variety. Watch out, vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. No, there's not. Waze, is, Waze annoys me because only about 20% of what it tells you is accurate. Anyways, positive takeaways, variety is huge. There are infinitely more cars at a show like that than your little podunk Columbus, Ohio arranged four weeks ago show. Obviously, it's Southern California. You have 10 million people within a 100 mile radius of the show. Um, so that was cool to see so much. Obviously, there's a lot of big names in the community that are in that region. So I got to meet some people that I have heard about, heard of for years, you know, put some, put some faces to names. So that's cool. And then obviously just, it's a car show. You go with people that, that you like to spend time with and it's a social event and it's an excuse to get up early and drive your car and get it shined up and talk to people about it and it was a blast and I'll go next year for sure. It's an extremely different vibe than Timmy Fest. It's a totally different group. It's Hassan and Nate, Megan, and then a couple people I've met through recent E39 Source endeavors like Daniel and um, Danny and people like that. So. The only person out of those group, out of that group, the only two people out of that group that have been to Timmy Fest are Megan and Hassan. And neither one of them came this year. Hassan hasn't been here for a few years now. But eventually, you know, someday if most of us end up on the West Coast, that will become the Timmy Fest get everybody together for a long ass weekend and just have fun and chill. And that's eventually what it'll be, I hope. Anyways, um, that wraps that up. I've been meaning to do that forever. Time is an absolute luxury these days. Um, you know, somebody commented, I'm sorry, I don't remember who. You said it right though. When, Whenever you're awake, you are at work when you are a business owner. And it's it's beyond crazy. I get so many emails, Facebook Watch messages. Watch out, vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. Instagram messages, email, you know, every single medium. I mean, I, I answer sometimes over a thousand inquiries in a day and like three of them will lead to a sale it's it's a lot of work and a lot of communication and people get really mad when like a day or two goes by and I don't get back to them let me send you a thousand messages and see how long it takes you to get back to them with prices part numbers pictures compatibility reports condition descriptions shipping quotes to specific zip codes you name it it's a hell of a lot of work anyways uh, 135 miles to go now, 2 hours and 16 minutes. I will talk to you from Tennessee. Tennessee kind of looks like Kentucky, a little bit more mountainous maybe. I just came in, I didn't see any welcome, uh, welcome to Tennessee sign, although I was sandwiched in between some trucks there for a while. But, yeah, still no rain, so that's good. Weird places here. I don't know where the hell I am. I kind of drove through part of Knoxville over here. They still think it's Christmas, apparently. 22A Christmas Tree Lane. What the hell? Tennessee's weird, dude. This is whack. Lumberjack Square. I don't know what's going on here. This is uh, 11 miles from the house in Gatlinburg.
goal was to get here before sunset, and we're just going to be able to do that. I'm 10 minutes, 3.6 miles out, ETA 8.51 p.m. So that, really, I left the house about noon, but by the time I rented a car, I had to go to Acme, I had to go to Walmart, I had to get gas. Um, by the time all of that happened, it was about 1 p.m. before I left, which is almost exactly eight hours down here.